What's good? What's good? What's good? No script for you guys today. All I have for you is a tennis ball. Um, so yeah, this is a throwback to my older videos. Let's see what we can come up with off the cuff here. But I keep thinking I'm going to stop this YouTube channel, but I just look at the analytics and especially these past couple months, it just, I'm getting over, I'm averaging 15 views every 48 hours, even when I don't post. So I posted a bunch in March and that started the rise, but now I'm not even posting as much, yet I'm still getting like 12 to 15 views, over 10 views every 48 hours, even when I just don't post anything for like five days. So I'm just gonna make videos for now. And it's funny, this channel is like six months old. Um, I was, I, I kind of wanted to see what would happen over two years, so I guess I might just keep doing it until then, but we'll see what happens. And I'll probably go off the scripts because I've been writing so many, but just new stuff happens every day, so it's like, I don't even know if I'd rather probably just talk. But yeah, um, so this video I was planning on talking about communism and socialism leading to fascism. Yeah, for some reason I've just been researching fascism a bunch the past. Honestly, since, because I, I watch Peter Schiff, so, or I listen to Peter Schiff, his podcasts on YouTube. But the the last couple he, he released, he's talking about the Chauvin case. And I'm like, dang. Um, I'll, I haven't watched this yet, the one he released today. I just watched the one from yesterday. So to be honest, since yesterday, that's when I was like looking up fascism. But I kind of like the guy, but um, I don't agree with his views on the Chauvin thing. Because to me, it seems like the state power is it's extended. So Schiff always talks about the state having too much power and he goes into the financial markets and the economy more, but then he doesn't extend, he extends that to a lot of stuff, but then all of a sudden he doesn't extend it to when someone gets killed by a state police officer. So, um, yeah, to be honest, I don't really want to go into it that much, but um, that's just like kind of, I was like, wow. So at first I thought things were communist in terms of the state having too much power and all this stuff. But since I started learning about fascism, it seems like fascism arises out of socialism and communist thought. So a lot of times, or at least in the 20th century, what happened was you had leaders like Hitler and Mussolini who interacted a lot with communists and socialists earlier on in their careers, or in if you want to call it career, like in their lives like in their 20s and 30s or most mostly in their 20s like when they were young men like kind of like my age right now to be honest and like in later 20s they interacted with a bunch of communists and they were actually a real part of that the communist underground in their countries so Mussolini was in Italy and Hitler was in um was in Austria, Hungary. Um, I think it was just Austria at the, at the time. I'm not sure if it was Austria, Hungary, or I think it was Austria, Hungary until after World War One. But so 
he was in Austria and Germany, and they were heavily involved in communist communist circles um, because of for for Hitler it was because he was working. Actually, funny to be honest, I'm reading Mein Kampf right now, so like I'm reading so much stuff, but yeah, he he was involved in a lot of those circles because he was working and he was like, hmm, I see what these guys are talking about, um, these communists. He actually thought they made a good point. He thought they were kind of misguided and he thought that was because of Jewish people, but he saw a lot of their sentiment. And then same with Mussolini. Mussolini was kind of around universities a lot and he got kicked out he got kicked out of university, I think. Funny enough, like Hitler gets kicked out of art school, Mussolini gets kicked out of university. So I don't know what that means. Like, and then people are talking about how the universities are communist these days, you know? It, it's just like history is repeating itself, but Mussolini gets kicked out. He eventually goes back to university, but then he starts writing for a socialist, a socialist, um, like paper, I think it is, I'm not quite sure. But he was actually a socialist, honestly, for like the first like half of his life. I think he lived up to be like 60 or something, 61. He was a socialist until his 30s, and then he switched to being a fascist because he believed that the socialists didn't, they didn't fully get the national part of it. So he was like, a lot of the things they say are correct, but he, they don't see the need for a national identity. And kind of honestly the same with Hitler. Hitler was like, they're right, but they don't see the fact that it's the Jews doing a lot of this stuff. So we need to nationalize and kick out the Jews. Um, so honestly, you know, just looking at how, how in history, all of that communism stuff led to the, the quote unquote strong men fascists. I don't know if America's heading for that, but when I was listening to Peter Schiff, I was like, huh, it just, it was like, it's almost like the, it's like the opposite. Cause to be honest, I wouldn't call Peter Schiff a fascist necessarily because he's not for he's not for big government because the fascists were ultimately about using the government to control the society still and Schiff isn't talking about using he's like it's the opposite he's like government out of everything except for certain things whereas the fascists were like government involved in basically everything and putting this race over another. So I don't want to get too involved in terms of the shift and race stuff. I was just like, wow, to, uh, I don't want to call him racist, but he just gets involved in race a lot. So I was like, that's interesting. Um, yeah, that was just kind of interesting to me. But yeah. I guess that's just where I want to talk about today. I don't know how long this video is. I have no script for it, but I just honestly found a lot of that stuff interesting as I've been researching how fascism arises out of communism. And I guess they're not exactly the same because I got flack from people because I'm like posting on Facebook and stuff just because like, I don't know, um, I just one want to learn about the algorithm, which I kind of think I learned about and two, just because to be honest, no one is really like in California, no one's really talking about this stuff. I guess it's not good to talk about politics or whatever, but um, I just post on Facebook, even though politics is like all around us right now, unless you agree with the person, it's not good to talk about politics because a lot of people talk about politics a lot of the time, but it's just usually they agree with each other. So there's, yeah, if you don't quite 
agree that it's like not good to talk about it. Um, but yeah, so I post on Facebook. Maybe I'm kind of just an agitator, to be honest. I'm not gonna lie, in in a sense, um, because I kind of like the individual more than like thinking about a group, which is why I kind of saw fascism and communism as the same. I was like, no, you're just using the group to overtake an individual. But I guess there's some delineation between them because in communism, like the whole world is kind of your, your stage more or less at like from the beginning, you don't really separate it. All you do is separate it into like the the proletariat kind of like the workers and and the the bourgeois class like the the owners but in fascism it's more of no it's our race our nationality it's like hyper nationalism first and then the class doesn't matter as much like they both want to abolish class but whereas in communists and socialists, they just want the workers to control the state, like all the states worldwide. But the fascists want a certain nationality or race to control the state. And then once that state is strong, maybe even take over other states for resources if necessary. So one is ultra nationalistic, the other, or that's how it ends up being. And the other is kind of more internationalistic, if that makes sense. Um, yeah, and yeah, so I guess it's different. I got some flack for saying it wasn't different. But to me, as a person who likes the individual sovereignty, it might as well be the same. Obviously, there are delineations, but from my perspective, it's like you're using the group, like the public group, to overtake the individual and subordinate the individual. And for me, I'd rather have the individual as the basis and then you can make a group if you want, but you shouldn't look to the group first over the individual because the madness of crowds, I'm reading a book on, on that too. Like the, um, the madness of crowds. Um, I forgot who the author was. I have the audio book set up on, on, like on a tab, but I haven't, I haven't read it yet. Um, yeah, I'd rather, I, and just judging from my life in general, like what I've seen that like group think is not, it's not a joke. Group think is not, not a joke at all. Like an individual thinks a lot differently than a group, even if it's a group of just three people. And oftentimes it's not bad. Groups are fun. Um, new groups are definitely fun, but you know, there, there's a, like when, when you, when, when the group is first and the individual second, rather than the other way around, then it's a different story entirely than if individuals come together and then they form a group. So yeah, that's all I got to say on that. Hopefully you like that unscripted. I don't know if I hit 10 minutes. I feel like when it's unscripted, it goes way longer than when it's scripted. And that's just a funny fact about life maybe too. But, or screw that, I don't know. Maybe it's not. I mean, I'm too young to say that. But okay, we're done here. Peace out. Have a good day. Have a good morning or whenever you watch this.